Good morning, America. Today is Thursday, the first day of March, and it is 11. Actually, it's 1031. Today, we're going to be talking about idolatry. Idolatry. We have heard this word over and over again within the last year or so. We've talked about it. We're back on it again. What is idolatry? Idolatry is the worship of idols. What are idols? Idols are anything that is made by the hands of man that they bow down and worship. Uh, it could be a calf. It could be a statue of a being of some type. It could be a person who is an actor, an idol could be almost anything that you worship and you cry for and you die for. Those are idols. Okay, and it is a sin to our God to worship idols. All right, so we have some backup here that we're going to lean upon before we get to the actual reading of today, which will come from Acts 17. Judges, I'm sorry. Judges 2. Let's get there. Are we there? Oh, oh yeah, we are there. Okay, we'll come from Judges 2. Uh, excuse me. Okay, I apologize for that. Turn some of that heat off. Okay, the first one. The first one comes from Acts 17, verse 29. We're talking about idols now. Worshiping of idols is irrational irrational okay spoken of in Acts 17 verse 29 for as much as for as much then as we are the offsprings of God we are not to think that the Godhead is like unto um, gold or silver or stone graven by ark and man's devices where our God is a true God indeed. He is not made of gold. He is not made of silver. He is not made by the hands of man. Okay. The second one, Romans 1. The second one is degrading. Worshiping idols is degrading. And we're going to back that up with Romans 1, 22 and 23. Romans 1, 22 said, professing themselves to be wise, they become fools and change the glory of the uncorruptible God um, into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-legged beasts and creepy things. Okay, He is not any of those things. All right. Worshiping idols is demonic. Evidenced by 1 Corinthians 10, 20, and 21. And it says this, But I say, this is Paul speaking, But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would... Not that ye should have fellowship with devils. You are not to have fellowship with devil if you worship the one true universal God. No devil worshiping. Okay? Um, the second leg of that, which will be verse uh, 
21 says ye cannot in first corinthians 20 first corinthians 10 verse 21 ye cannot drink the cup of the lord and the cup of the devil ye cannot be partakers of the lord's table and of the table of the devil it's impossible to worship both you must pick one okay 22 says do we provoke the lord to jealousy yes we do when we worship idols are we stronger than he no we are not stronger than god we can't even see what he can see we can't hear what he can hear he can see what you are doing when no one else can he can hear what's in your heart when you haven't opened your mouth okay another thing about idol worshiping is that it is definitely defiling second corinthians 6 we're gonna go to second corinthians 6 i already have it here verses 15 to 18 but we're gonna start at verse 14 it says be holy when you are worshiping a, an idol you are not being holy it says be holy O corinthians this is paul speaking again we have spoken openly to you our heart is wide open 12. you are not restricted by us but you are restricted by your own afflictions your own afflictions your own attitude restricts you the way your mindset works restricts you those are your affliction the way you think can be an affliction okay um do not be unequally yoked I'm sorry, let me start from the beginning. Oh, Corinthians, we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own afflictions. 13, now in return for the same, I speak as to children. You also be open. 14, do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? None no fellowship at all no commonality at all okay and what communion has light with darkness none where there is communion there's light okay 15 and what accord has christ with Balau? none all right or what part has a believer with an unbeliever none all right, eight sixteen. And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? Zero. All right, for you are the table, the, te the you are the temple of the living God, as God has said. This is what He has said: I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. So God has absolutely nothing to do with the devil. Nothing. Okay. Therefore, 17, we're still in 1 Corinthians. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, said the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean and I will receive you. 18, I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters, said the Lord Almighty. So you cannot be the child of both God and the devil okay therefore having these promises beloved let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit perfecting holiness in the fear of god all right we have i think one more two more it is defiling in second corinthians 6 
We read that. It is also enslaving in Galatians 4. Let's go to that. Verses uh, 8 and 9. Galatians 4, 8 and 9. Fear for the church. But then indeed, when you did not know God, you served those which by nature are not gods. Okay, this is when you didn't know him. Nine, but now after you have known God, or rather, are known by God, how is it that you turn again to the weak and begging elements to which you desire again to be bondage? Ten, you observe days and night, days and months and seasons and years. Eleven, I am afraid for you, lest I have labored for you in vain. Those that were still worshiping the idols, he became afraid for them, and he felt that ministering to them was in vain. They weren't listening. All right, we have one more abominable in First Peter's. These are all the things that worshiping idols are. They are irrational. It is degrading. It is demonic. It is... Um, Irrational, degrading, demonic, defiling, enslaving, and abominable. All right, we're going to read the last one, abominable, 1 Peter 4, 3. And it says, is that 1 Peter's? Yes, 4, 3. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourself also with the same mind, for he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Two, that he no longer shall live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lust of men, but for the will of God. Three, for we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of Gentiles. When we walked in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, rivalry, drinking parties, and abominable idolatry, in regards to these, they think it's strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dissipation, speaking evil of you. Yes, America. There are times in our life when we have to start making some serious changes. We change, first of all, how we worship God. And once we become closer to Him, we begin to walk differently, talk differently, act differently, think differently. Everything about us is different. And in return for our obedience to God, He rewards us with His many blessings. So until you start making that change in your life, you will remain where you are. If you are happy there, if you are not, then you need to make a change from the inside out. And sometimes that change means changing the people that you are around. That change may also mean changing the things you do for people. All of that is God orchestrated. All right? So you have to leave the idols alone, embrace the true God, and be obedient to whatever he is putting in your spirit. All right. So now let's go to the reading, which is coming from Judges. It's a very short reading. And I believe the writer of this is my elder Moses. Yes, it is Moses. Let's double check. To see if it is Moses. Okay. Is there's a discrepancy here? The author is unknown, possibly Samuel, it says. Okay. We will we will go ahead on and do the introduction for Judges because I felt like uh, we have not had it. 
and it is in my spirit to give it to you. So let's do an introduction into Judges. Judges, the author is unknown, possibly Samuel. Days written between, four, uh, between 1043 and 1004 B.C. Time span approximately 350 years, period of time from the death of Joshua to the birth of Samuel. Title, the book derives its name from its contents about the judges of Israel who were leaders during trivial and national emergency at the time when there was no central government. The Hebrew title for this book, uh, Shaptana, means ruling leaders or judges. Background, this book covers the period following the death of Joshua and the Israelites' initial conquest of Canaan. During this time, the people, wavering between apostasy and repentance, are ruled by individual leaders called judges. The book of Judges records this era of disobedience and defeat. So it was an awful era for the leaders uh, at that time because it was a period of disobedience. And that always makes leadership much more tougher for the leaders when the people are disobedient in the same manner that Moses had to deal with a lot of junk from the people that he led out of Egypt. It was a very painful moment for him. He almost got stoned several times. The people almost returned to Egypt once. It was horrific. It was horrific. Okay. Um, keywords. Oh, yes. Contents. Because they had not completed the conquest and occupation of the promised land, the Israelites began to adopt the sinful ways of the surrounding nations. A tragic circle develops. Israel falls into sin. God's discipline with foreign oppressors. The people cry to God for his help. God raises up a deliverer judge. Peace is restored for a while. Uh, the cycle of rebellions is repeated seven times in the book emphasizing God's love and forgiveness with the penalty for lack of faith and obedience. The story of three significant judges are discussed in detail, Deborah, Gillian, and Samson. Key words in the book of Judges are hypothesis, judgment, repentance, mercy. The Israelites continually fail to learn their lesson. And this is, this is, this is just part of their history and it's part of their history today as well actually today is 100 times 100,000 times worse than when Moses was leading the people out of Egypt this generation is worse unfortunately you can't even counsel your children today uh, every time you begin to counsel them they always seem to have something to come back at you with. They don't have the capability of listening. Uh, yet that they expect their children to listen. But yet you must demonstrate to the children how it is to listen. Because that's what children are learning from. They're learning from their parents. So if they see their elders trying to counsel their parents... And their parents are always coming back at them with something that's a disrespectful nation of people. Because when I was coming up and your elders spoke to you, you stood still, you gave them eye contact, and you heed to everything they said to you. Period. That's how it was. My parents' generation, same thing. Their parents' generation, same thing. It is this new war order that has no respect for their elders. And think little about what they do and how it may affect those they love. Little about it. Okay? So, here it says... Hypothesis, judgment, repentance, mercy. The Israelites continually fail to learn their lesson. The hypothesis means that they will have to pay the price of judgment from God, indeed. But when they finally show repentance, God will then, in his mercy, rise up a judge to lead the people to restoration and rest. Things. 
What are themes? Themes are PowerPoints, facts that don't need to be proven. Okay? There is always a price to pay for our sin. And it's never worth it. Okay? There is always a price to pay for our sin. Alright? The price of sin is destruction and death. We all need proper leadership in our lives, and we do. And usually our elders are the ones that we look up to for that leadership. Or the saints and servants of God are, the, are our true leaders. Okay? Not the politicians. The most important leader and judge for each of us today is Jesus Christ. He is our ultimate leader forevermore. Forevermore. Okay, once this generation, my generation, have gone to our God, the next generation must learn to use Jesus as their leader. Okay, without strong leaders, we are more inclined to be influenced by damaging situation or deceptive people. Very true. Very, very true. There's an old saying that our elders used to say, Everything that looks good is not always good for you. They were usually talking about men. Everything that looks good is not always good for you. And they would look at their sons and say the same thing. Everything that looks good is not always good for you. And they are right. What my generation look for in a man, this generation don't even consider it. It's all about looking good now. It's not about working hard. You can't get nowhere. You can't take that beautiful woman to the mortgage company and say, if you look at my woman, can you my, my mortgage pay now? Mm -mm. You can't take that good looking man and say, look at my husband. He's good looking. It's my it's my my rent paid now. Mm -mm. Looking good is nothing. It's just anonymity. Working hard is everything. It is everything, America. If you're gonna join forces with somebody. Join forces with a person who is a hard worker like themselves, like yourself. Join forces with someone who knows Christ like yourself. He will be faithful to you. She will be faithful to you. You will work hard together. You will prosper together. But if there's any discrepancy there, you will struggle together. And struggle will be the story of your life. Believe it or not. Okay? So there's always a price to pay for our sins. The price of sin is destruction and death. We all need proper leadership in our lives. The most important leader and judge for each of us today is Jesus Christ himself. Without strong leaders, we are more inclined to be influenced by damaging situations, circumstances, or deceptive people. God, in His mercy, will deliver us when we repent wholeheartedly, of course, of our sin and obey Him. Doing right in our own eyes is not necessarily doing right in God's eyes. This is true. What you perceive to be right is not necessarily right in the sight of our God. Okay, so now let's go to the reading. We'll be reading from 2. It is 23 verses. We have gold for prophecy, a lot of brown for Satan. We also have a significant amount of black for sin. We have one verse of red for discipleship, verse 7. And the rest of it is just brown, gold, and silver. And we do have some uppercase letterings in verse 1, 
2, 3, 4, verse 10 and 11. Actually, verse 1, 2, 3, verse 20, 21, and 22. Or uppercase lettering. So let's pay attention. What's going on here? An angel rebuffs Israel. Okay, the people of God had done a bad thing. Let's find out what they did. Joshua's death and burial, sad moment, of course, and Israel's judgment, punishment. Verse 1 is go for prophecy or uppercase lettering. And an angel of the Lord came up from Gilead to Buck him and said you see here comes the uppercase lettering I made you to go up out of Egypt and have brought you into the land which I swore unto your fathers and I said I will never break my covenant to, with you this is the Lord speaking he's reminding them of what he has already done he's reminding them of where he has taken them from and he is telling them that he will never break his covenant. Okay. Two and three are brown for Satan. But all uppercase lettering pay attention. And ye shall make no legion with the inhabitants of this land. Ye shall throw down their altars. But ye have not obeyed my voice. Why have ye done this? Okay. So. The people have obviously not listened to the Lord. They are doing what they're not supposed to be doing. And he asks them a question. Why? Three. Wherefore I also said. I will not drive them out from before you. Mm. But they shall be a thorn in your side. Mm. And, your God, and their God shall be a snare unto thee. Okay. This is the judgment. For is still brown, no uppercase letter. And it came to pass when the angel of the Lord spake these words unto all the children of Israel, that the people lifted up their voice and wept. It's, it's always like that. It's always like that when the Israelites were getting uh, um, their due reward. They always started begging and crying. The Lord's used to that. He's used to that response. Five is silver. For history, and they called the name of that place Bukchem, and they sacrificed unto the Lord. Six, still silver. And when Joshua had let the people go, the children of Israel went every man unto his inheritance to possess the land. Here comes that seven verse, which is read for discipleship. And the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua, and all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great works of the Lord that he did for Israel. He did. He witnessed much. I told you our elders are history book, particularly our biblical elders. That's why I love using them as examples. It's hard to find them today to use as examples. Eight and nine is silver. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant, the servant of the Lord, died being 110 years old. He was young. Ten. Nine, and they buried him in the border of his inheritance in Tim Timnah Harris in the Mount of Ephron on the north side of the hill Gash. Ten to thirteen is brown. And also all of that generation were gathered into their fathers, and there arose another generation after them which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done as this generation knows not the Lord. Or any of the works that he has done. Because they are not being reminded continuously by the servants. Now if these servants are servants for themselves. Just like some people work for themselves. And they don't work for a company. Then they will not use the word of God. They will not use the gospel of Jesus Christ. They will use their own words. And this is what the nation is embracing. That's why it's not doing you any good. Okay. 11. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam. 12. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt, and followed other gods of the gods of the people that were round about them, and bowed themselves unto them, and provoked the Lord to anger. 13. And they forsook the Lord and served Balaam and Ashtoreth. 
14 and 15 is black for sin. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and they delivered, and he delivered them into the hand of the spoilers that spoiled them, and he sold them into the hand of the enemies round about, so that they could no longer stand before their enemies. Mm -hmm. 15. Whither, whither so they went out, the hand of the Lord was against them for evil, as the Lord has said, and as the Lord has sworn unto them, and they were greatly distressed. 16 is uh, blue for salvation. Nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges which delivered them out of the hand of those that spoiled them. The Lord has judges on this earth all the time. But in the biblical time, it was very easy to recognize these judges. In this era, it is difficult for the people to recognize the judges. And even if they're using the word of God. They will forsake them for someone who's not using the word of God. And those are their judges. And they listen to them intensely. Lost sheep. Lost. 17. And yet they were not hearken unto their judges, but went a whoring after other gods and bowed themselves unto them. They turned quickly out of the way which their fathers walked in obeying the commandments of the Lord but they did not so 18 is yellow I'm sorry blue for salvation and when the Lord raised them up judges then the Lord was with the judges and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge for it repented the Lord because of their groaning by reason of them that oppressed them and vexed them so the Lord is never happy because he has to punish us he is never happy about that. Neither is he happy when you see your enemy has fallen. You are not to express any happiness for that. Or if your enemy should stumble against a rock, you are not to show any gladness for that. 19. Brown again. And it came to pass when the judges were worse dead that they returned and corrupted themselves more than their fathers in following other gods to serve them and to bow down unto them. They ceased not from their own doing nor from their stubbornness as it is today. Now in this world today, all of the fake gods are recognized. All of them. But the one true God. His house is virtually empty. When I was coming up, when my parents were coming up, the churches were full on Sunday. Every church all across the land now is practically empty on a Sunday. They're having parties. And all this other foolishness in the church. 20. And 21 and 22 and 23 is gold for prophecy. And the anger of the Lord was not against Israel. And he said, because that this people has transgressed my covenant, which I commanded their fathers, and have not hearkened unto my voice, 22, 21, I also will not henceforth drive out any from before them of the nations which Joshua left when he died. Mm. 22, that th through them I may prove Israel whether they, be, they will keep the way of the Lord to walk therein as their fathers did keep it or not. 23, therefore the Lord left those nations without driving them out hastily, neither delivered he them into the hand of Joshua. So this is what's going on today, America. When Jesus walked on earth, we were super close to God. See how close these hands are? We were very close to him. This is the world. My hand is the world. This piece here is the closeness to God that we were. This was during Moses' time, Joshua time, Saul time. This is the biblical time. Okay, here we go. I can't even go any further with this. I wish I could bend my fingers back this way and bend this back a little bit more. 
were further from God. Okay? And in the meantime, in between this space here is all the false gods that are being worshipped. And also, you know what else happens when we are far away from God? Much evil comes upon the land. Much of it. The children are being shot in the classrooms. The churches are being attacked. The grave sites are being turned over. Children are beheading their parents. Husbands are burying their wives. Wives are burying their husbands. Wives are killing their children. All that is happening. Oh, and by the way, it's going to get worse. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we have incorporated many laws that contradict the laws of God. And as long as those laws are in place, America, your world is not going to get any better. What will be the beginning of a new start? A national day of fasting. A national day of fasting in which everyone, everyone must take part in. A day of praising God. Every church must be open all day long during that day of fasting. A day of repealing laws that are against the laws of God. Same-sex marriages has to be repealed. Period. It is against the laws of God. It is an abomination unto the God we serve. And if we choose to keep going at the rate we're going, then yes, you will see a wrath come upon this nation that will remind you of the biblical times. Because that's what kind of nations we have here. The Lord literally has to get in our face for you to notice him. And if that's what he has to do, you better believe it. He has no problem with it. So if you want to be on the right side, you want to be among his saving grace, you want a saving angel to come and get you up on that day, get your house in order. Get your attitude in order. Otherwise, your demise will be what you receive. Thank you very much for listening to us here at Spiritual Water. My name is Brenda Guerrero. I certainly hope that I have made this very understandable for you. I pray that it may have an impact on your life as it has in mine. In the meantime, may the peace of God be upon you. May the protection of God surround you and all those you love. And may the will of God for your life come from thee. Till the next time, enjoy your day.